what can we say about Ephesians? Called the Mount Everest of the New Testament, this book takes the child of God into the heavenlies, mentioned six times, a foretaste of the joys of our eternal home. Here we see our exalted position and privileges in Christ. The words together and all, mentioned 42 times, are pivotal ideas, and almost every paragraph shows us our links with the Godhead. When Saul hit the dust on the Damascus Turnpike, he had two questions for Christ. Who are you, Lord, and what would you have me to do? Almost all his epistles, as with this one, can be divided into those two subjects. Notice especially the blessings we have in chapter 1. Verses 3 to 14 are a paean of thanksgiving with the recurring refrain to the praise of his glory. But each section refers to a different giver, the Father in verses 3 to 6a, the Son in verses 6b to 12, and the Spirit in verses 13 and 14. The second part of chapter 1 is a prayer, as is the end of chapter 3. The first focuses on enjoying the power of God, the second tells us about the love of Christ. We are more secure than we can ever imagine and more loved than we'll ever know. Chapter 2 describes the before and after the believer. Two great problems are solved. First, the wall of sin is removed between sinners and a holy God. The second problem was limited to Gentiles, the middle wall of partition blocking us from the covenants of promise. That wall had been erected by God to protect the messianic line, but Christ demolished it at Calvary since its purpose was accomplished. Now on the cleared land, a temple is rising, a home for God constructed out of living stones. The mystery of the church as one body is fully discussed in chapter 3, with the threefold honor we've been given to display the wisdom of God, the power of the Spirit, and the love of Christ. The purpose of the ages, the really big idea, is given here. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. As mentioned, chapters 4 to 6 give instructions from the Creator to his workmanship on living out the good works God has prepared for us to do. The first half of chapter 4 describes the sevenfold basis of unity in the church, then the wonderful diversity in the gifts by which every believer is equipped for service. The rest of the chapter gives helpful hints about putting off the old way of living and putting on the new. He shows how God can turn thieves into philanthropists and make grace speakers out of trash talkers. Chapters 5 and 6 continue these practical pointers explaining relations in marriage, family, and business. Then Paul gives us tips on preparing for spiritual battle by donning the armor of God. And that's our scripture snapshot on the epistle to the Ephesians.